Hello and welcome to CNX. CNX Special Report. The Health Consequences of Southeast Asia's Burgeoning Vape Business. Across Southeast Asia, vaping is on the rise, lauded as a means for smokers to quit smoking. However, public health experts believe that e-cigarettes and vapes contain highly addictive nicotine, as well as a combination of hazardous chemicals that pose long-term health hazards. And it's not just smokers who are picking up the habit. With thousands of accessible flavors such as bubble gum, candy, and lemon sorbet, a growing number of Asian young people are becoming addicted. Across Southeast Asia, there's a new addiction, vaping, promoted as a way for smokers to quit the habit. Pasti kemana-mana selalu pegang vape, ya. Yeah. But health experts say e-cigarette vape products contain highly addictive and toxic chemicals with long-term health risks. Uh, nicotine actually narrows the blood vessels, which can cause cardiovascular disease. Um, it has some metabolic effects, uh, which can increase the risk of diabetes. With thousands of flavors on offer, like bubble gum, candy and lemon sorbet, millions of Asian youth are becoming hooked. <laughs> 101 East investigates the booming vape industry across Indonesia, Malaysia and Singapore. Indonesia's capital, Jakarta, is home to a growing new addiction and social media influencer Jessica Rima is building a career on it. Hari ini kita lagi ada photo shoot buat produk vape. Oh. Ini salah satu produk aku yang bakal launching. Ini liquidnya dan ini device-nya. Flavor-nya rasanya lemon coke karena aku suka banget cola dan aku suka yang segar-segar. Jadi aku bikin flavor-nya ini aku yang ciptain sendiri. In less than a month, Jessica will launch her new product at Indonesia's next annual Vape Expo. Trade shows like these highlight the rapid rise of vaping in Indonesia. In 2021, there were more than 6 million vapors, a tenfold increase in a decade. As a vape influencer, these events are important for Jessica's profile. Tiga tahun lalu, target aku adalah masuk lima besar influencer vape di Indonesia. Tapi target aku sekarang adalah masuk sepuluh besar di dunia. Vaping began as a way for cigarette smokers to wean themselves off their addiction. In Indonesia, more than a third of adults smoke, one of the highest smoking rates in the world. The burning of tobacco in conventional cigarettes produces killer toxins like tar and carbon monoxide. In contrast, vapes don't contain dried tobacco leaves and don't produce smoke. Instead, they use an electronic heating method that generates a vapor. Cherry Lasmana is a former smoking addict. Saya rokok udah cukup lumayan lama, itu dari kelas 6 SD, dari usia kurang lebih 11 atau 12 tahun ya. Saya 20 tahun merokok dan sangat berat sekali. Hitungannya sih saya per jam sih. Per jam itu satu jam tuh bisa habis satu bungkus. Saya nggak pernah check up ketika saya perokok berat, cuman badan itu berasa capek, apalagi naik tangga. Kalau lagi kayak batuknya gimana itu reaknya bisa sampai kuning. Suami saya bilang, e, kenapa kita nggak coba berhenti merokok, kita coba lari ke vaping. Cherry says she feels better after switching to vaping. Perbedaan kesehatannya tuh banyak banget. Saya kuat jalan lagi, kuat lari lagi, nggak gampang ngos-ngosan, apalagi naik tangga. Tidur juga lebih nyenyak. Jadi sekarang saya 100% tidak merokok sama sekali. Saya hanya vaping saja. Motivasi aku uh, totally di vape ya. Karena mamaku tuh sempat terkena cancer nasofaring. Salah satu penyebab terbesarnya itu adalah uh, asap rokok. Walaupun dia tidak merokok, tapi kalau ada orang di sekitarnya yang merokok, dan itu kena impact-nya ke dia. Dan dari situ aku langsung kayak, oke, okay, kayaknya boleh deh mengedukasi teman-teman sekitar, keluarga dulu, untuk switch to vaping. Today, more and more Indonesians are taking up vaping. 
with vape cafes and shops opening across the country. Staff, known as vaporistas, work to convince customers to try one of the hundreds of flavors on offer. Kalau untuk rasanya sendiri itu saya banyak banget ya untuk sekarang ini kan ada rasa durian, ada rasa strawberry, ada black currant. But unlike food products, manufacturers of e-cigarettes in Malaysia and Indonesia are not required to disclose their ingredients. About 16,000 flavors are available, yet most of their labels remain vague. So what exactly is inside a vape e-liquid? Our reporting team sent five e-liquid flavours popular in Asia for testing. Cola, grape, bandan or rose syrup, caramel and custard cream. We then consulted experts about the results. So something that was found in all these five e-liquids was nicotine. So nicotine is an addictive substance that can be found in all cigarettes as well. Often we think of nicotine as this innocuous substance that just causes addiction, but it causes so many more things than that. And nicotine actually narrows the blood vessels, which can cause cardiovascular disease. Um, it has some metabolic effects, uh, which can increase the risk of diabetes. And in terms of the lung, our lungs are lined with tiny hairs that are called cilia, and these act as a barrier function for the lungs. So nicotine actually damages these cells, and so your increased chances of exposing to infections, and then long term, there's chronic lung diseases such as asthma and also uh, cancers as well. In cigarettes, nicotine is released from the burning of tobacco. But for vapes, manufacturers extract the nicotine from tobacco leaves in advance and then add it to e-liquids. The delivery of nicotine is faster, quicker, compared to waiting for that nicotine to come out from the combustion of the tobacco. But why add such an addictive and harmful substance to something promoted as a healthier alternative to cigarettes. To investigate, our team heads to Malaysia, a country that despite its relatively small size has emerged as a major producer of e-liquids. Shahar Badin Jalil is executive director of Nanosticks, a Malaysian vape manufacturer. Since the beginning, our campaign is actually stop smoking in seven days or money back guarantee. So, untuk seseorang perokok berhenti merokok, dia perlu certain amount of nicotine. Let's say they smoke uh, two pack of cigarette is equal to one pot of this. So, nicotine wise is the same. Tapi kalau di vape, kita bisa sesuaikan nicotine seberapa banyak nicotine yang kita mau gunakan untuk daily. E-liquids are available in various nicotine strengths, from zero nicotine up to 12 milligrams or even 50 milligrams. The goal for people who want to quit smoking is to eventually reach zero. But zero nicotine vapes are scarce. One study in the US found that they account for less than 1% of the market share and not all vape manufacturers sell them. We don't sell zero nicotine because if you sell the zero nicotine, you can't quit smoking. Betulan saya di adjustnya bukan merendah, tapi meninggi. <laughs> Awalnya tuh saya beli lokal, gitu, nikotinnya tuh 30. <laughs> Terus tiba-tiba nggak ada barangnya, akhirnya saya beli yang merek luar, itu udah ada, adanya 48. Akhirnya ya saya pakai yang 48. Sensasinya beda ya. And nicotine is not the only harmful element. Our results from testing the five e-liquids also detected two other chemicals not listed on the ingredient label. Vanillin and acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde was found in all the five products that were measured. That is a carcinogen and it also can increase the addictiveness effects of the nicotine. Three of them out of the five products contain vanillin, 
vanilla comes from the vanilla extract. That is added on as a sweetener or as an additive for flavoring. These compounds are fine to be swallowed, but when we heat it up and, and inhale it, it actually is an irritant to the lungs. Because there are thousands and thousands of different e-liquids, so we don't really know what's in them and what those compounds could cause in the body if they're inhaled. We honestly just don't know. So food flavoring is more pretty serious, more safe, huh? You boleh dekat website kalau luar bersepa-sepa maklumat. Dan dia dari segi kesihatan dekat negara-negara luar jelas terbukti yang dia adalah selamat daripada rokok. Bah rokok kita dah tahu dia ada lebih kurang 4,000, 5,000 chemical. Dan dari situlah daripada rokok yang mudarat dia besar, kita ambil mudarat yang lebih kecil lah, uh, vape. But it's not just smokers who are taking up vaping. According to a 2018 Indonesian Public Health Survey, the age group with the highest prevalence of vaping is adolescents. Nearly 11% of those between 10 and 19 years old vape. The number is similar across other parts of the region, including Malaysia, where more than half a million adolescents vape. Yeah, because the brains are still developing up until we're about 25 years old, which means that before that age, if you start using something as addictive as nicotine, you're much, much more likely to become addicted to it. Early exposed to nicotine, their lungs are even smaller and weaker. They don't grow to the full capacity and so the breathing and their regular lifestyle in, in doing what they want to do can be hampered without proper amount of oxygen in their body. High rates of youth vaping have prompted several countries, including the US and Canada, to announce bans on flavoured vapes. Dari survei yang kami lakukan itu justru memang muncul anggapan bahwa mengapa mer mereka remaja-remaja ini merokok vaping karena asumsi atau anggapan bahwa merokok vaping dianggap lebih aman, lebih beradab karena pembentukan opini oleh industri vaping lewat iklan-iklannya, lewat marketingnya. Because of the well-documented harmful effects of smoking, most countries place at least some restrictions on cigarette advertising. In Indonesia, cigarette companies can advertise on billboards and in print media, but ours are limited on broadcast media. In Malaysia, the rules are stricter. All forms of cigarette advertising are prohibited. Tetapi belum sama sekali regulasi yang mengatur soal rokok vaping di Indonesia, baik itu di media cetak, elektronik, ataupun terutama di media digital. Itulah yang sangat mengkhawatirkan eh, mengapa pertumbuhan jumlah perokok vaping di Indonesia begitu cepat karena masifnya iklan rokok vaping di media digital atau media internet. Yang benar-benar sekarang sponsor aku itu rutin dari 2017 tuh sampai sekarang. Tujuh brand, tujuh company yang kerjasama dari 2017 sampai sekarang nggak pernah stop. But manufacturers deny such advertising targets youth. Kalau you pergi ke David pun ada stiker 18 tahun. Packaging kita pun ada kita letak this product bukan untuk kanak-kanak. Kita buat sendiri. Atas inisiatif sendiri untuk kita nak kerajaan nampak kita memang willing nak regulate. To investigate how effective this so-called self-regulation is, we went undercover in six vape shops in Malaysia's capital, Kuala Lumpur, to see if they would sell any of their products to someone who looks like a teenager. Hi, um, nak tanya, ada tak macam sekarang flavour apa yang popular? Yakut lah, mula je, tu paling top. Uh, smoking eh? Um, Sebelum ni ada smoking? Tak. Kau baru-baru nak try lah ni? Haa, memang baru. Memang baru gila. Memang baru gila. <laughs> Untuk beginner okey ke? Haa, okey. Takut dia soft je. Takut dia keras. 
nak soft soft nak try permulaan dulu saya recommend ambil ni dia RM10,000 RM36 perform eh great apple eh uh -huh. ok ni Of the six shops we visited, none of them asked for ID, despite four of them displaying 18 plus signs. Vape companies say that the age restriction is self-enforced, it's not law. Sejak 2012, kami telah memohon kerajaan untuk mengeluarkan undang-undang bagi mengawal selia penjualan vape dan rokok elektronik. Tapi sehingga sekarang masih tak jadi-jadilah. Ah yang itu yang kita rasa sedih sikitlah. Instead, the Malaysian government has eased up regulations. In April 2023, the health minister exempted liquid nicotine from a list of controlled substances under the Poisons Act. The move was widely criticized by healthcare groups as it allows vape liquids and gels to be sold legally and openly to anyone in Malaysia, even children. In Indonesia, a 57% excise tax on vape liquids was introduced in 2018. Sejauh ini, uh, kebijakan terkait dengan uh, industri hasil tembakau termasuk di dalamnya VAP, pemerintah Indonesia menganut prinsip pengaturan. Kita tidak menganut uh, pelarangan. Sekarang industri VAP berkembang cukup pesat dan saat ini memang perkembangannya lebih pesat dibandingkan industri rokok konvensional. Kalau kita lihat uh, penerimaan uh, cukai dari rokok elektrik Pada tahun 2018 sebesar 98,9 miliar rupiah. Pada tahun 2021 meningkat menjadi 629,3 miliar rupiah. Singapore's e-cigarette policy is the strictest in Southeast Asia. It's illegal to buy, use, import or sell vape devices. So in Singapore, I would say that their ban was based on an early precautionary approach. It's like, okay, we have this new product that could potentially help smokers, but we don't know its long-term risks. We don't know how effective it is against current cessation aids. So we wait for the evidence to come out. So that's the approach that Singapore has taken. But in the meantime, a thriving underground market has emerged, driven by the high demand amongst young people. Most get their vapes through the popular messaging platform, Telegram. Actually, it's surprisingly easy for them to get. Uh, a lot of the young people seem to be getting vaping products from online sellers to kind of do a cash on delivery type service to Singapore addresses, sneaking them across the border and from Malaysia. Recent raids by authorities indicate the scale of the black market. More than $300,000 worth of electronic vaporizers. Nearly $370,000 worth of electronic vaporizers. More than $2.2 .2 million worth of electronic vaporizers and components has been seized. The HSA found more than 10,000 assorted e-vaporizers over 48,800 assorted pods and 187 e-liquids. What we're seeing is people are really unclear about the harms of vaping. Um, a lot of people don't even seem to be aware that there's nicotine inside the e-liquids, which is really addictive. And experts warn there's an even greater danger looming. The potential for vapes to be used for illegal substances. These are Indonesian police in plain clothes. They've just arrested a suspect and are escorting him into this house in West Jakarta. Okay. 
Siapa ini? Kamu ditanya jawab. Siapa ini? Bisa jawab kan? Bisa pak. Nilai. The floor is scattered with various materials, equipment, and hundreds of vape liquid bottles. Kita menyita barang bukti uh, liquid vape kurang lebih 350 botol. But these aren't just your regular vape liquids; they contain illegal drugs. Maka mereka tahu tata cara untuk meraciknya dan komposisinya, maka jadilah barang tersebut menjadi liquid vape ini. Jadi modus baru dalam uh, narkotika di Indonesia. Nah, ini yaitu uh, narkotika jenis vape. Indonesia has seen the emergence of a cottage industry making narcotic vape liquids, and it's one with a wide network. Ini jaringan internasional. Yang penting mendatangkan barang mentahnya dari luar. Tantangan kami yaitu tadi, kami harus mengetahui informasi pengiriman barang masuk yang akan masuk ke Indonesia. What's more, these makeshift home labs don't stay in the same location for long. Modus operandi supaya ini berpindah-pindah seperti dengan halnya proses penjualan, mereka setelah melakukan penjualan langsung take down, putus penjualannya, kemudian sama halnya dengan proses produksi. Setelah mereka berproduksi sekali produksi, mereka akan berpindah tempat lagi. To find out more, our team tracks down some vape drug users. Liquid THC itu booming itu sekitar 2017 akhir sampai 2019 awal lah booming banget banyak. THC or tetrahydrocannabinol is a psychoactive substance that can be extracted from cannabis plants. It's the compound responsible for producing the high feeling that people typically associate with marijuana. In Indonesia, it's illegal to use, possess, or sell all forms of marijuana. Aku dapat informasi dari teman-teman ya. Uh, lalu akhirnya ketemulah satu akun Instagram yang menjual itu. Dari situ yang mulai sering beli di, di, di orang itu ya, di akun itu. Kalau ganja yang biasa mungkin ya butuh waktu 3 menit atau 5 menit Kalau ini betul-betul instan, setelah dua atau tiga kali hisap, sepuluh detik. But THC isn't the only drug being added to vape liquids. Ada teman di Singapura nawarin, ini ada yang lebih boom, lebih gawat. Apaan tuh? Kaya. Terus dia ngasih tahu, ini lo liquid, tapi harus di vape. Cobain lah. Terus, wow. oh ini benar-benar bombastis gitu. Maksudnya pada saat itu semua drugs itu kalah gila ya. Wah, kita kan jadi kan otomatis langsung mikir, wah ini kalau dijualin bisa benar-benar boom. Budi and his friends went from users to manufacturers and sellers of illegal vape drugs. Saya tahu teman-teman saya pakai itu sintetik drugs yang kanaboid yang kayak GHW satu, yang kedua ada MDMA, yang ketiga ya itu crystalmet. Ketika gue pakai liquid vape drugs yang apa liquid drugs itu di vaping itu sekitaran gue nggak ada yang tahu karena ini udah baunya. Keep an eye on CNX. CNX provides the most recent updates.